Hi, I'm Steve James, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 376. This episode is the first of two on what are you doing with love? There's no question that we've got love. When we're born again, we receive the gift of Holy Spirit. It floods our heart with love. We're going to look at this new type of love. We're going to see how we can live that way. We're going to see how important it is to love that way. Take your Bibles and go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And this is like uh, the theme verse for this part of the class. See, love is the greatest motivator. Love is the greatest activator. Love is the greatest energizer. Jesus Christ, when he was living here on earth, moving around. It was the love of God that he had in his heart that he had compassion on people, so he fed them. He saw that they were lame and he healed them. It was that love, it was that the greatest motivator, the greatest activator, and actually the greatest energizer in his life. And here in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, Now abideth faith, and that's the Greek word pistis, and it can also be translated believing. Now, by faith or believing, hope, charity. Now, hope anticipates the return of Jesus Christ. And charity, charity is the love of God in the renewed mind in manifestation. These three, but the greatest of these is what? Charity, the love of God. We, in this class, spend a great deal of time on believing, learning about how believing is to be operated and how uh, everything's accomplished by our believing, according to our believing. We've also looked at hope as we anticipate the return of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ came so that we could have eternal life. But the greatest of these is charity the love of God in the renewed mind in manifestation the love of God in the renewed mind or in your mind you put the love of God in your mind in manifestation or in action it's the action the title of this teaching is what are you doing with love look at Galatians the next book Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 And it says, In Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which is, which worketh by what? Love. Or which is energized by love. Believe in which is energized by love. That word, worketh, is the Greek word, enigo, which means, be operative, be at work. To put forth power or to be energized. Our believing is energized by love. Remember I said it's the greatest energizer? To operate the Spirit of God, to operate the things of God, it is energized by love. And it's demonstrated and seen in the walk of Jesus Christ on earth. He demonstrated how to walk in love. And we're going to see that as we go through the Bible here. Now, there are two main types of love in the Scripture. One of them has for its main Greek Greek word, agape, and there's other forms of it, agape. And it's the love of God, and it is sometimes translated as charity. The other Greek word is phileo, having the meaning of to be a friend the city of Philadelphia, the meaning of that word is the city of brotherly love. Philadelphia, phileo type of love. Now every businessman knows about phileo love. 
because you have to show that kind of love to be in business. It's the type of love where, you know, I scratch your back if you scratch mine. We make business deals. It's a good deal for you and it's a good deal for me. So we, we practice that type of love. Phileo love. To be a friend. Going to Romans chapter 5 verse 5. Now there's no question that you have the love of God. We're going to show you this in Romans chapter 5 verse 5. The only question is, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with love? Hence, the title of the teaching. And it says, Hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is what? Given to us. So when you're born again, and you receive Holy Spirit, right, which is given to us, it says, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. It's shed abroad. Those words shed abroad have been translated as flooded our hearts. Flooded our hearts. And in the Revised Standard Version, it is translated like this that I have on your syllabus. The hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which is has been given to us. See, it's flooded our hearts. It's poured into our hearts. We've got the love of God. Now, this love of God was not around until people got born again and was introduced by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ introduced this new type of love, this new way of walking. To be born again is to be born again of love. We need to be able to put it on in our minds to renew our minds to it. We are love. We are the greatest lovers on the face of the earth today. We just need to renew our mind to it and act upon it. Go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Chapter 13. John, chapter 13. And we're going to read about Jesus Christ teaching here. And in verse 34 it says, A new commandment I give unto you. Now they had the, the old commandments, right? The, the ten and others. He says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, and that ye also love one another. That word love is the word agape all the way through. He says, he, he's teaching about something that wasn't really available yet. It wasn't going to be available until it was completely completed. After Jesus Christ lived on earth. After he was crucified. After he was buried for three days and three nights. After he was raised from the dead. Some 40 days later he was ascended into heaven. And then... Ten days later, the Holy Spirit, the gift of Holy Spirit, was poured out upon people. Then it was available to have this agape type of love. Jesus Christ was teaching these disciples about something that they were going to have in the future. It wasn't yet available. They could see phileo love, but this new type of love, this new type of love that was going to just blow everything apart in a positive way. This new type of love. Now look at verse 35. It says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. By this they're going to know that we're Jesus Christ's disciples. If ye do what? Have love one to another. Same word. Agape. Agape. This new type of love. Agape. It wasn't there yet, but it was going to be. And when it was, it was going to be the stamp or the brand. That's how people are going to know if you're a disciple or not. And that disciple means a disciplined follower. A disciplined follower. In other words, we know, because we've read it, that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Now, we discipline our lives. We we develop our lives to walk in that new way of walking, that way that Jesus Christ walked, that new type of love. 
The only thing that really changes people is love. If I was to take a baseball bat and say, you change or I'll hit you in the head, they might say, oh yeah, I change, but they don't change their heart. The only thing that changes people is love. We love, listen to this, we love the unlovable. We let others walk on our feet until they can walk on their own feet. That's the type of love. Now, this type of love doesn't mean that you're a weak man or a pushover. And it's not that smother kind of love either. It's the kind of love that we can read about in the scriptures and we can see in Jesus Christ. It's the kind of love that can say to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Or to a group of Pharisees, you are whited sepulchers. And uh, sepulcher was a grave. They painted them all nice and pretty white on the outside. But inside there was rotten bones. So when Jesus Christ said, you are whited sepulchers, he was saying, you know, you look good on the outside, but you stink on the inside. That wasn't a very friendly thing to say, right? No. But did Jesus Christ love? Yeah. Yes, he did. He did. Or you could look around upon the people with anger because of the hardness of their hearts. It's a new kind of love that could hug the leper. Now, leprosy is a disease that was very contagious, and if you got near it, you could catch it too. So most people kept away from leopards. They put them on the outside of town. They have leprosy colonies so they could be away from everybody else. Nobody wanted to go where the lepers were. Jesus Christ hugged the leper. How do you think the heart of that leper felt when Jesus Christ hugged him? No man, no man even got near him. No man ever touched him. Jesus Christ hugged the leper. That's the kind of love we're talking about. It's the type of love that has honesty with it as well as being tender and yet having commitment. It's a brand new type of love. And as you read and search the scriptures, you can see what the men and women did even before this new life type of love came available in the Old Testament with just the phileo love. But Jesus Christ introduced to us this new love, the love of God. And you know what makes this love of God so wonderful? You know what people love to? They love to the point that they want to be loved back. I love you, I love you, and of course you want to get it back, right? I love you, and you want to hear back what? I love you, right? Well, with the love of God, we can love, and we don't really need to get it back because God fills us. I love you. God fills us. I love you. We don't need to get it right back from that other person. People usually love to, to the degree that they want to be loved back. That's that phileo love. I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. With this new type of love, we can just love, period. Just keep on loving. And Jesus Christ introduced us to this new type of love. And as you read the Gospels, you can see what Jesus Christ did. To the woman who is uh, accused in the very act of adultery, and they wanted to stone her, and they said, Jesus, the law says we have to stone her. And Jesus reached down and drew on the ground and he lifted himself up and says, He that is without sin cast the first stone. Totally original, not written in the Old Testament. Totally original, but full of love. And he looked at the girl and says, Where are your accusers now? And she says, There is none. He goes, I don't accuse you either. Go and sin no more. It's the kind of love that you can really see in the Gospels. Go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians. Corinthians, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians chapter 6. And in verse 14 I want to start. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. 
What does that cross stand for? That cross stands for the love of God. Remember John 3.16? God so what? Loved that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ so loved that he gave his life for us. What does that cross stand for? It stands for the love. All love has giving in it. People have come up to me at times and they've said, you know, you wouldn't have recognized me two years ago before they got, you know, born again, got involved with the things of God. They come up to me and say, you wouldn't have recognized me two years ago. And you know what I think? Well, I wouldn't expect to. I mean, you should, be, you should have changed. You should be dynamic. You should be vivacious. Understanding God's Word and having the love of God in you, I wouldn't expect to know you. My wife has seen my high school friends, seen my mother, and so forth. And she has heard about me before I got born again. And she tells me that she would never have gone out with me before. I, and I don't really blame her. I wouldn't have gone out with me either. But you know what? Once you start putting on this love of God, you should change. I, I shouldn't expect to see know you two years ago. You should be dynamic if you've been in the Word for two years. Now look at this phrase here, and it says, The world is crucified unto me. I want to tell you a story about a man that I knew that was a tremendous pool player. He used to make his living one way or another by playing pool. And his wife used to get so mad at him because he would out, be out playing pool and he should have been home with his family. He was just a great pool player. But then he got involved in the things of God. He started to learn God's Word. And he started to put on the mind of Christ and started to love people. Earlier, before this happened, he would be playing pool and he'd run the whole table right off. Just a few years ago, him and another guy were out playing pool, and he took the pool cue, and he missed the first shot. What happened? What happened to that great ability that he had to play pool? Well, something became more important than playing pool. He lost that great ability to play pool because something became more important. With the Word of God and the love of God, you just find more important things to do. You'd just rather be with believers and sit around and talk about the Word of God and the love of God and the things that God's made available. So one time he had, he had this great ability to be a great pool player, and now he can still go play pool. Nothing wrong with playing pool, but he lost that great ability because he had something more important to do. And, that, and that's what it means. The world is crucified unto me. The things that the world thinks are so great to do just don't have that importance anymore. The important thing now is just to, to have God's Word and to be able to love one another and to love people. By this shall they know you're my disciples if ye love one another. The world was crucified him. With the Word and with love, that's what changes people's lives. It really changes people's lives. Now look at verse 15. It says, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but the new creature. The new creature is that Christ within you. And as you develop that Christ within you, and as you develop that love that has flooded our hearts with the love of God, you become a new creature. That's the important thing to develop and become a bat. You have to develop this love of God just like you have to develop any other part of your body. A person becomes physically fit by de developing their muscles. By doing push-ups and running, they develop their muscles. A person develops their brains by studying and reading and learning things. They develop this. We have to develop this love of God the same way. We have to, as we are reading God's Word, we're reading the Scriptures and we're searching them, we can see the love of God and how Jesus Christ did things, how the men and women of old did things, and how they loved and, and saw needs and wanted to take care of them. Love is the greatest activator. 
Love is the energizer that makes things happen in a person's life. It says the great, it says believing. We know how great believing is because without believing you don't accomplish anything, right? And it's great to know about and anticipate the hope of Jesus Christ returning. But the greatest of these is what? Love. The, and it's not just love, it's, it's the word uh, charity. The love of God in the renewed mind or in your mind, right? In manifestation, and manifestation means in action. You're utilizing that. You're making it happen. Now look at verse 16, and it says, As many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them, and mercy upon the Israel of God. And the Israel of God means beloved of God. Beloved of God. When you walk according to this rule, you have peace and mercy. That's pretty good. Peace and mercy. And as you develop this kind of love, you'll become the greatest lovers of all time. Love melts people like the sun melts a snowball. It really does. It's the greatest motivator. Not fear, not threatening somebody, not anything else a gun in war has never changed anyone's mind it's never done a baseball bat threatening you with it has never changed anyone's mind it's only that love of God that melts people's hearts just like the sun melts a snowball you know if uh, my family was to come into this house my wife and I said to her, what in the heck are you doing? You, this house looks terrible and what a thing. And you, son, no. what the heck are you doing? You know, and I raised uh, heck with my daughter, too. You know what they would say to me? Why don't you shut up? Right? You'd say shut up. But you know what? If I was to say, well, honey, I just thank God for you. What a wonderful woman you are. Thanks for taking great care of our house and our family. Thanks for being the wonderful woman you are. And son, I appreciate all that you do. And I thank you for all the work you do and how much of a blessing you are to me and your mother and daughter. You're just a wonderful girl. I'm so thankful for you. And, you're, and I just love you. You know what? They don't object. <laughs> they don't they don't object at all. They just take it. Why? Because people just love to be loved. They just love to be loved. It doesn't take long to get criticism before you're tired of it. But you know what? You never get enough of being loved, right? That's how other people are when we can give them love when we can give them love. What the world needs now is you walking in that love. You love people into being better. You love people into being healed. You love people into seeing God. How are they going to see God's love if you don't show it forth? We have to show forth God's love. As you, as you develop this kind of love, you become more and more like Jesus. And I'm going to say this. It's the Jesus walk. And by this shall they know you're my disciples. If you what? Criticize one another. No, no. Love one another as you love one another. When people see you walking in love, like Jesus walked in love, they will see how that God is love. They will see the Father. They will know what the Father is like because they'll see it in us. We will tell people that God's love and we'll show them that God's love. When you walk in this type of love, you are fearless. You will go into situations without any fear. Why? Because of love because of love. Love is the greatest motivator. Love is the greatest activator. Love is the greatest energizer.
This is the end of part one of What Are You Doing With Love? Part two will continue with the same theme. I suggest that you listen to part two as soon as you can to get the full impact of the lesson so that you can start to walk in that love bigger, greater, and better than ever before. Walking with that type of love, you'll be able to make a positive difference wherever you go.